What's up guys, Van here from McMovie Farms and today I'll be talking to you about LED lights. This is a four part video series which will consist of the following videos. In part 1, I'll be talking about this novice basics, only what you need to know. In part 2, I'm talking about the novice DIY where there's actually building involved. Part 1 and 2 goes hand in hand together. In part 3 and 4 we're gonna have a more in depth look. Part 3 consists of the advanced basics and what you need to know and when we move on to part 4 we're gonna do the advanced DIY building where I actually show you how to build individual LED lights onto a light strip. Okay so before I jump in and talk to you about lights I want to talk to you about a timer for your lights. One of the most important things with lighting is consistency otherwise you get various results and fluctuations. We sometimes forget to switch off our lights and sometimes we forget them on and we don't want that because it will result in algae or uneven growth. So when you buy a light first go out and buy a timer now that you have a timer there are a few things you need to know starting off with the par value or if you want to sound smart photosynthetic active radiation par goes hand in hand with the depth of your aquarium par basically means the intensity rating of the light as perceived by the plants the deeper the aquarium the higher the par value needs to be just read the side of the box to see what depth it is rated for. If you are not interested in growing the perfect planted aquascape like they do at the green machine, check their channel in the link in the description, then don't worry about par. Just look at the watts of the light as well as the color of the light which is displayed in Kelvin. Let's look at Kelvin after which I will explain a bit more about watts. Kelvin is basically the color temperature of the light. Most commonly used in fresh water tanks are 2700 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin and it all works in most instances for basic plants. 6500K is a good all-round light as it is readily available and supports almost all aquatic plants. 6500 is what I prefer and also what I have in all my aquariums. The third definition you need to understand is what, which basically translates to how much energy is consumed or how much power the light pulls from the wall. The watts can be an indication of how bright the light can shine. Lastly, let's look at the different types of light that you get. The T12s are the fluorescent old very fat ones, whereas T8s are the newer thinner fat ones, and T5s are the newer skinny ones, and lastly, LEDs which is the latest technology. Let's compare LEDs with T5s, T8s and T12s. LEDs produces less heat whereas the others produces more heat. LEDs uses less power, they generally last longer and they have direct light that shines into the tank. Whereas with T5s, T8s and T12s you have to use a reflector because the light comes out of the light at a 360 degree angle. LEDs are also generally cheaper and they are generally smaller. And lastly it is a lot easier to sell your LEDs second hand than it is with the T5s, T8s and T12s. So to sum up this video, if you want to grow easy plants like Anubias, Java Fin or Crips, you can use the light that works out the cheapest or looks the best for you in your aquarium as these plants grow in most lights. Carpeting plants on the other hand like HC or Dwarf Baby Tears requires more light and also the right light. So for these get a proper 6500 Kelvin light or at least between 6000 Kelvin and 7000 Kelvin that's right for the depth of your aquarium. Just remember that the deeper your aquarium, the more watts per 1 feet of tank you will need. Ok now for 3 tips. Tip number 1. 9 or 10 watt LED globes will be big enough to light 1 feet of tank if the tank is 30 centimeters deep. So if you have a 3 feet tank, you can use 3 times 9 watt globes spread throughout the tank on condition that the tank is 30 centimeters deep. Obviously if the tank is deeper, just use a few more watts. Just be sure to get the right color light around 6500 Kelvin and you'll be good to go for the average hobbyist. This LED is what I use for my aquarium racks. It's a 6500 Kelvin normal 9 watt LED globe. They grow most plants and do a fantastic job at it. The fittings are easy to build yourself which I'll show you in my next video. Just remove the cap to make the light go directly into the aquarium and not spread into the room. But note this will void the warranty. I will also show you how to do this safely in my next video. The plastic part known as the globe in the LED light is just a reflector to force some of the light sideways and it's not part of the feature that makes the light. Please note that some of these lights look like this when you open them up so it will not be as efficient as we want the light to shine down into the aquarium and not out of the aquarium or sideways. So buy one to test first before you take the cap off. 90% of them do however shine down. That brings us to tip number 3. When you climb onto the scale and realize you are light then press the subscribe button and if you are not light press it anyway. That's it for part 1 of this 4 part series. I really hope you guys learned something today and as always keep it true. Simple.